So hello there group, um, this is Fabiola again and I'm back again with just to talk a little bit more about this creating holes and filling up holes and removing holes function on our software program. I have my MBX version 5 open up here and what I've already done is I've created just a nice big red square of tatami fill. So the reason that I am commenting on this once again is because Elaine is finally having some good success with um, this function about holes and she had made some comments on the group about um, one thing that I thought was not entirely correct and that's why I'm addressing this issue. One of the things that she said and I hope I'm interpreting this correctly, pardon me if I'm not Elaine, is that you thought that you probably needed to create all of your holes at one time in order to get them to fill up and do other things with them later. And that's not entirely correct. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show that um, no, you do not necessarily need to make all of the holes at one time at the same digitizing step. But um, that does have a little caveat on there, which is that once you have created holes, yes, they are going to all fill up at the same time or actually be removed all at the same time from this main object. So I'll just demonstrate it, okay? My object has been created and it is now selected. I'm going to come to the digitize hole and I'm going to create one simple little triangle shape because I love triangles and not only that, they create quickly. So down on the bottom of the screen, you see a little prompt. I don't know actually if it's recording on this because I did crop my screen a little bit for recording purposes. But down on the bottom left hand part of the screen, it will say to enter point one of hole number two that you want to create. Now I only want to do one hole. So I'm going to hit my enter button and my hole has been created and once that got created that prompt went away here on the bottom toolbar. And again I don't know if you could see that on the screen because of the way that I cropped my recording screen. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to interrupt this process basically of making holes. Okay, so I'm hitting my escape key on my keyboard just to make sure that I'm out of that function. The other way that I could get out of that function of creating holes is I could come up to the stop button here on the top toolbar and it would also take that away. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come back to a rectangle square and I'm going to just digitize another shape. Okay, and I'm going to select my shape on my sequence bar and I'm going to change the color of it just so that we have a distinction between what we've got going on. So what I did is I created a shape, made a hole in that shape, interrupted the process of creating holes by making another shape. I'm going to go back to red square number one and I'm going to digitize another hole in it. We'll pretend that this is the Peppa Pig project that our friend Elaine is doing. Okay, so I've now created my hole and there it is. Hit the escape key to come back out of it. This time I'm going to fill up my holes by selecting my object. I'm going to fill them and it's asking what kind of an overlap I wanted or an underlap. It's either it's the same thing basically. What that is is how far of a distance away from this hole do you want your new shapes to be in that so that you can avoid having uh, some push and pull compensation problems in which these new shapes um, would not have been large enough to keep from having some gaps showing in your embroidery. That's what that's all about. So I'm just going to keep it at 0 0.2020. 0, say OK. My shapes have been created. They're over here. They're both red and they are separate, uh, separate objects. So I'm going to select the first one, change it into light blue, select the second one and make it into maybe this bright yellow just so that you can see them. I'm going to select one of them, come to the fill tab and turn it into a ripple fill. The yellow one I think I'll turn it into whatever the default is on the first embossed fill. Alright so there they are and yes they did fill up at the same time because the reason why is this is one object. This red square is one object with those holes cut in it so when I wanted to fill them they did have to fill up at the same time. But the thing that I also want you to notice about them is that they are two separate objects and I can do whatever I want with these objects. I can take them off, I can change the fill properties or whatever. Okay, remember that. They're their own separate little objects. Undo, I'm just putting them back on the spot. 
This time what I'm doing is selecting my red object again and I am going to remove the holes. And yes, when you remove the holes, both holes in that object that were created are now filled up. I'll move the spaces off, the little shapes off so that you can see that that did happen. All right, so what we have is um, you can create as many holes as you want in your object and you can do them at separate times, not all at one time if needed. But yes, they are going to fill up and they are going to remove all at one time in one function once that object has been created. So I hope that that um, clarifies a little bit more about making these little holes. What's neat about this is that every time that someone um, writes in that they're working on a project, you know, we all have something that we can learn. And to tell you the truth, uh, I had not played that much with creating holes function. I have done it. And, uh, and I thankfully knew enough about it to know that I would be able to help um, a little bit anyway with Elaine's problem. So there we are with a red square with no holes in it anymore, but with some other pretty cool little objects that we might want to play around with at some point. Okay, this is Fabiola. I hope that I was able to show and demonstrate a little bit in a way that was helpful to you. And once again, I'm just grateful that you're part of our group, all of you, and that we're learning together. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.